Thank you for joining us. I'm Kai Jackson. In an exclusive interview with Fox 45 News, City State's Attorney Ivan Bates is explaining the start of citations that will now be issued for quality of life crimes. Bates is kicking off his new effort to help curb violence in the city as Baltimore police begins a new era of leadership. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost breaks down how Bates is planning to work with the acting commissioner, Richard Worley. City State's attorney Ivan Bates says he did not see Michael Harrison's departure as commissioner from the Baltimore Police Department coming. But Bates says that's not going to stop him from moving forward to bring accountability and enforce some of these quality of life crimes in the city. This was the most opportune time for me to pass the torch. Michael Harrison making the announcement last week. He's leaving his post, ushering new top brass in Baltimore's police department, acting commissioner Richard Worley. For Baltimore's top prosecutor, Ivan Bates, the news was as surprising to him as it was to some in the city. Did that come as a surprise to you? Yeah, it was a huge surprise. Um, Commissioner Harris and I had a phenomenal working relationship. I've learned a great deal from him. Do you have any concerns about working with uh, acting Commissioner Worley? I don't. We've done a lot together. He's worked side by side with Commissioner Harrison, and I do feel that, you know, if there had to be a change, he's the perfect person. Worley awaiting city council approval before he is the permanent pick to lead BPD, but there are concerns about his residency. Fox 45 News obtaining records revealing Worley, who was deputy commissioner of operations until Mayor Brandon Scott nominated him to serve as commissioner, lives in Anne Arundel County. According to Baltimore's charter, not only does the commissioner have to live in Baltimore City, but as of January 1st, 2022, so do deputy commissioners. Worley would have to sign a letter of intent to move into the city to qualify. Fox 25 News sending questions to Mayor Scott and BPD asking about Harrison's decision to leave and when did acting commissioner Worley sign his declaration of intent? Mayor Scott's team telling Fox 45 News Worley and his wife are actively looking to reestablish residency in the city, but not mentioning the letter of intent. BPD ignoring the questions. Meanwhile, Bates says he spoke with Worley already. He gets the bigger picture. Part of that bigger picture, Bates' new citation docket, where quality of life crimes will now be enforced with a citation. We're going to hold people accountable. We're going to give them a shot. Not once, but twice. The community service will be done in the communities where they're given this citation. Not once, but twice. And if they come a third time, they've asked to be prosecuted and we're going to give them what they asked for. During the budget hearings, City Council President Nick Mosby drilling down with Bates about his citation docket concerns. What is your office going to do to ensure that it's enforced fairly and equally throughout the city? So I am concerned about that, but I also recognize that we needed to do something for for the people who are out there. Do you think that he was taking out some perhaps some frustration about what this means and the policies that you're reversing from his wife in the previous administration? I uh, can understand some of the apprehension when, you know, individuals in your household have done the exact opposite. They don't want individuals to be arrested and have a criminal history. Mm -hmm. They want accountability. This was the way in which we felt we could do accountability. We're not going to do mass incarceration like it was previously, but we're not going to just walk past the problem and think it's going to take care of itself. That doesn't happen. Court hearings will be held once a month starting July 17th. BPD and the Sheriff's Office will begin issuing those citations for the quality of life crimes. And as for acting Commissioner Worley's confirmation, it's unclear when the City Council will take a vote. In the newsroom, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. And Ivan Bates is asking for more taxpayer dollars to prosecute crime. More from him and how that money will be put to use coming up at 1030 on Fox 45 News. Another weekend and another case of violence in Bells Point. Video into our newsroom shows a number of fights that broke out yesterday. It's another case of violence in one of Baltimore's most important business areas. Fox 45's Jeff Abel is live right now with calls for peace in that area. Jeff. Well, you know, in most weekends, the city has been shutting down this street, Tame Street, and others that are rolling into Fells Point because of crowd control measures. But they have seemed to be doing very little to keep the fist from flying. Those who live and work in Fells Point spent this day clearing glass, replacing shattered windows, and recovering from a weekend crowd that was fighting mad. I just heard people hollering and screaming, and I heard sound like shots, and that was it.
It was two in the morning when the anger erupted here at Broadway and Shakespeare Streets. Videos posted on social media show fists swinging, feet kicking, and an all-out brawl that just wouldn't seem to stop. Well, it, it, it definitely seemed out of control. It seems like people are hurting, angry, going through changes. <laughs> Online video shows police moving in and attempting to break up the fight. Eventually, the crowd dispersed, and according to police, there were no arrests. The incident comes just two weeks after another fight erupted on Tame Street in Fells Point. No one was injured then, but those who live and work here were concerned. Well, they had tequila bottles with straws. They had a lot of miniatures, a lot of bottles of liquor. They don't seem to be addressing the real problem of crime in Baltimore, and there just needs to be more attention to it and not just talk and not just window dressing. I think they're doing what they can but I also think that it starts at home before it even starts with the police. The city closes the square in this community each night and shuts down many roads here on the weekend. Still, it failed to keep a fight from shattering the peace early Sunday morning. It is hard to watch. You know, I, I wouldn't bring my kids down here. Again, no one injured in this latest incident and no arrest. We are live in Fells Point tonight. Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Tonight, a small Annapolis community is rattled after a mass shooting 24 hours ago that left three people dead. Police this afternoon announced the arrest of 43-year-old Annapolis man Charles Robert Smith. Officials say a hate crime is not off the table of possibilities. Our suspect is a white male and the three victims are Latino, but we can't draw any inferences from that. You know, we, we, we have to look at every possible angle. Keith Daniels is following the story and has the very latest for us. Tonight, a community struggling to understand why it happened. A mass shooting on the front lawn of a home in a quiet neighborhood in Annapolis. Woodrow Nick calls the images of investigators combing the scene and the lives lost startling. People are dying over stupid situations, over a party, over a parking lot, different opinions. But why does it come to guns? Police have arrested Charles Smith in connection to the shooting. Charges include second-degree murder and second-degree attempted murder. Three people killed, three others wounded. Police identify the dead as a father and son. 55-year-old Nicholas Morales shot as he ran to the scene trying to help his son. 27-year-old Mario Morales Ruiz also killed family friend 25-year-old Christian Marlon Segovia. The identities of the three wounded have not been made public. Charging documents obtained by Fox 45 News detail an argument before the mass shooting. Investigators say Mario Morales was hosting a large party on Paddington Place Sunday night when a neighbor, Smith's mother, complained about the parking. Mario initially argued with her regarding the parking issue. Police say Smith later confronted Mario. That argument turned physical. Smith pulled a gun, then gunfire, killing Mario and the others. Investigators say at one point, Smith stood over Mario Morales and shot him several more times. Another neighbor speaking to us in Spanish, telling us how she feels about the killings. <inaudible> Neighbors tell us several children were present during that shooting. Other residents describe Smith as hostile to Latino neighbors over issues like parking and music. Regarding the deadly mass shooting, the police chief says it's too early to talk about motive. Our suspect is a white male and the three victims are Latino, but we can't draw any inferences from that. You know, we, we, we have to look at every possible angle. It's too early to tell what the motivation was, but if it is a hate crime that falls under the U.S. Code, and it will probably be prosecuted in federal court. That was Keith Daniels reporting. Now, Smith is behind bars at this hour, being held without bond. Meantime, we're told the wounded victims are at the hospital. Their conditions have stabilized.